hold up, something's up, and I've felt this way for about two months, but the name of the new caster will be Pictomancer at the very least, and if it's not, then expect me to be genuinely shocked and hold it to me I'm that confident. Quick rewind time. Green Mage will be a hammer-wielding support base caster as a direct contrast to Black Mage and be like the Bard or the Dancer for physical range DPS, where Green Mage for the caster DPS will sacrifice large chunks of its personal damage to pass out to allies in the forms of buffs to allies or more likely debuffs to enemies like Scholar's Chain Stratagem does today. The caster role does not have a job that fulfills this Bard role. Okay, rewind over. And that is what I said before about the Green Mage, which remains true to this day, but at this point I believe that Green Mage is being changed in name and theme to be the Pictomancer. Also Pictomancer, I truly believe at this point, given all the evidence and all what a Pictomancer is about, will be a combo caster requiring combining the three different primary colors as different so-called status effects on targets for different results. Do I believe that they're going to go with damage over time based build? No, I think instead that it's going to be combining those primary colors in order to achieve some kind of final result. I'll talk more about that later as I really think that gets super cool, but I truly believe that this has so much potential and we have seen this in different games, like if anyone played uh, Defense of the Ancients or Dota I should say, then you probably know that there is a job in there, or rather a character in there, that does something similar. But before the pitchforks come out, because I'm spending too long talking about the combo system, let's go over the details of why the Pictomancer is truly what I believe it is. First one is Pictomancer has existed in Final Fantasy XIV before under the name of Ink Mage. Ink, like the ink that you use in a pen. In the Shadowbringers dungeon, the Hero's Gauntlet, Ink Mages are going to appear before the second boss. One could argue if the devs didn't retire the class system that Ink Mage would naturally use a job stone to become a Pictomancer. But also, there is the proximity effect going on here, which is really interesting if you think about it. Right after the Ink Mages came one of the most hyped up boss fights of the expansion. This fight was one of the most cited things, and the devs are probably just like, why is this specific one dungeon boss being cited by the player base so much? It's the Necromancer Girl, where people were clamoring, demanding a Necromancer, and she was talked about. Her character was analyzed to, like, every single detail by some people. Like, this was one of the most brought up to the developers bosses ever like it was all over the place and so as if I was in the shoes of a developer I would be like why not blend the two themes together the ink mage where a few of them appear just before this talked about boss and then necromancer which is the job of that second boss combine ink mage necromancer pictomancer this has been on my mind ever since people spoke of Pictomancer at first, like when they literally first talked about it. Because I'm just like, hmm, Pictomancer, Necromancer, hmm. Now the second instance of Pictomancer existing is in one of the Stormblood raids where we combine different colors together for different raid mechanic effects to resolve them. I'm going to talk a lot about combos later. There's some interesting ideas here. Next is an unfortunate byproduct of us being human and us working on stuff like my coding style and my day job as a software engineer is gonna probably look similar to code that I write elsewhere of obviously I look at code from six months ago and then I cringe and go why did I do this this way but we have similar styles when we work on something or rather maybe I should look at it in terms of other people not myself <laughs> but other people have a testament to one skill that shine through Developers obviously contribute to many aspects towards a project, and during the Halloween event, the wand animation to me was so glaringly, painfully smooth, and it reminded me strikingly of a paintbrush. Like, if you replace that wand with a paintbrush, that's what my visual system kind of like did to me. And that on its own, I agree, is weak evidence, but then I also look at many of the animations in the game, like the colors, like what seeing what the developers are putting into stuff like Criterion Savage, and, or like the one that really stood out to me at first, that first got me honed in on this was Scholar's book from Savage Criterion, that like advanced tombstone upgrade, and the colors and the animation and the splotches in there. Yes, it's a literal paint book, but it's just like the it, it, the animation stood out to me. As someone who's played Final Fantasy XIV for so bloody long, I don't really recall an animation that looked like this. And maybe I'm wrong, but like I can't recall it. And the combination of these two, especially these two, there's other examples obviously, made my mind go, hey, maybe this Pectomancer thing really is the class, and I've been kind of thinking it ever since. Next is the easy one. Yoshi P's t-shirt has green turtles, and the name of the turtles are famous artists. 
I know, you've probably heard it before. Next. Now we're going to tread off the bean path a bit with this shirt, where things get much more interesting. I'll say that the turtles are wearing masks and accessories of different colors. Orange, red, blue, and violet. Again, I think that it's going to be a combo system just to the primary colors, because even if you look at some of the, like, bravely default cutscenes, it's just like, oh, you have, like, these different colors that get, like, meshed together. So I really don't believe it's going to be, like, orange and violet. I don't necessarily believe those two. Maybe they'll be, like, byproducts of the combo system, but we'll talk about that later. One could also argue that the background behind the turtles looks like a splash of colorful paint, and I feel that this is extremely deliberate. There are tons of less colorful, more quote-unquote edgy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle shirts out there, but this one was chosen, which seems ridiculous until you consider that the only other exp or expansion, I should say, to release two DPS was Stormblood, where Samurai's hint was the Spider-Man guy's name. Next is that in social media, for better or worse, patterns emerge, or at least I've noticed more often than not, is that I'll get one TV show with some theme, and then it'll crop up a little bit later in a game, later in a movie, so on, so forth, intentional or not. I don't know why, but this seems to happen a lot. League of Legends released Huey, which is an artist, and while no, I don't expect the new caster to get a large paintbrush, because it's too similar to the Black Mage staff, and I don't think the devs would do that. I I think the theme of color and magic and artistry exists here, and it definitely feels like a pattern I could see. But Pick the Mancer has existed in many other games as a primarily support-based caster. Bravely Default 2, also made by Square Enix, is one of those games, and without diving too much into the weeds and the exact skills, the overview of the Pick the Mancer says, Pick the Mancer specializes in abilities that negatively affect enemy stats, otherwise known as debuffs. This is in Modern Final Fantasy XIV, would look like something like Chain Stratagem from Scholar, increasing crit rate on a target, or the caster Roll Action Addle, or Machinist Dismantle to damage down the target. The second point of the overview is that they can give buffs to the allies. Take Dancers, Dance Partner, Dragoons, Battle Litany, Bard's numerous songs. And then the third point, which might be the most interesting because, like, how is Pictomancer a DPS, is that they say that combining both aspects, a Pictomancer can weaken others, strengthen themselves, and deal big damage into the bargain which as a DPS caster in Final Fantasy XIV would make a lot of sense. Like, look at Dancer. Dancer has two exceptionally heavy-hitting abilities in their combo system, in Standard Finish and Technical Finish, which deal frankly bizarre burst damage. Yet Dancer is regarded as one of the most selfless, utility-based DPS in the game, followed by Bard. Now, dare I say it, Given Pictomancer in Bravely Default is made by Square Enix and has yet to make an appearance in the official Final Fantasy series, is it much of a stretch to look at the name of the officially announced Viper job for melee DPS, which is totally different from the Final Fantasy series, but has Viper appeared in other games? Obviously, like, pick up any, like, first-person shooter, like, it'll be in there. But is it fair to not say, hey, Pictum Answer doesn't make sense? They also already have in-house expertise and familiarity with this job, which you know that experience and doing something and trying something and failing with something is like how people know something not that they failed with it but like they succeed with it so imagine compounding years of experience and success with it so that in-house knowledge is right there for the dev team on 14 to like access to even just consult with and as someone who's worked many software engineering jobs one thing we do anyone at any job is we talk to our co-workers whether they were on the same project or not we just do that that is how people work but further from that without repeating myself too much i'm gonna say that the caster role is probably the best and most diverse role in all of final fantasy 14 right now love it or hate it those three jobs in their own role in their own quote-unquote lane are probably the most three distinct from one another because respectfully the healers you know what Scholar Sage, a lot of them is in common, y you get my point. Black Mage is a slow casting damage powerhouse that is relatively immobile until they use cooldowns, in which case they become super crazy mobile. And the more familiar they are with the fight, the better they can do by a leaps and bounds, and it's always very impressive. The second one is Summoner, which goes through multiple different summoning life cycles and is significantly more mobile. Red Mage is the least mobile of the three. How many spicy comments am I going to get for saying that? But it's true! While still having access to some mobility abilities to help alleviate that in a little bit, but it, the Red Mage really is weaving in and out of range and melee to 
like execute explosive finishers. I almost don't want to call it a combo caster because it just is like a finisher after a finisher after a finisher in a very linear fashion that ends with revelation, which is obviously very impressive, but I don't feel like it's a combo caster, but we'll talk about that later. Because rather, let me explain. You aren't really combining different elements in order to say red plus blue equals, or red plus say yellow equals like, you're not really questioning that. You're not literally combo ining? Combo ining? Combining things is. I'm trying to, like, find a witty way to say it, and I'm kind of failing it, so I'm just gonna be honest. I, I tried. Now, people will say, hey, Summoner and Red Mage have small buffs that they provide to the party, but that's the keyword. Super small. Super duper small. It's just like you aren't hearing people say that Monk is the most selfless DPS in the melee DPS category, are you? Like, no, but they provide brotherhood. Relative to the dancer or the bard, their personal damage contribution that they give away to the party in the form of buffs to allies or stripping an enemy of defenses to amplify the team's damage is significantly smaller than dancer. Leading to the fact that we have, in again, the most unique role that we have right now, a noticeable absence. One that I can see a Pictomancer filling. Dare I also bring up the fact that the developers have directly, and it was a few years ago, but directly stated that they were looking at potentially removing, removing, <laughs> removing, removing summoners revivening. And so it'll be even harder to call a summoner a utility giver at that point, even if we do overweight and try and put an emphasis on that 3% damage buff for the entire party that they do hand out sometimes. Leaving the Pictomancer to fill in a void of a novel and highly technical combo based caster revolving around mixing paint colors for devastating effects that I will talk about in my next video. Also, I end that video by saying that also if you consider the character Cryal, she kind of just looks like the kind of character that would carry a paintbrush around. Or maybe it's not even a paintbrush, maybe it's like a pen or a pencil, who knows? Because especially looking at Sage's new list, they could go quiet with this. Anyhow, 